Ooh, quite a tour de force we're having here around the globe, but this is what's happening on World Diabetes Day. We want to be able to show what's happening in different areas in the world. And with that, it is my great honor to welcome Sara Bejinski uh, to the stage from Uganda. Sara, I'm, I'm apologize if I didn't pronounce your last name. Let's just stick to Sarah, <laughs> right? Great to have you here. Wonderful to see you. Sarah, tell us, how are you celebrating World Diabetes Day in Uganda? Uh, first of all, I want to say thank you for having me. I'm very excited for the platform. Uh, World Diabetes Day in Uganda, we had a number of, event, of events yesterday and today. And um, one of them today, I was honored to host it by my member association, Uganda Diabetes Association. And it was focusing on uh, diabetes education for patients to enable them to uh, manage their diabetes better. And also education on uh, diabetes complications, as well as free screening for diabetes complications. So one of the things we have in Uganda that we struggle with mostly is uh, access to quality diabetes care. Um, very few Ugandans are able to follow the annual screenings, like checking the eyes, food, um, dental. Um, so what the organization did was offer free screening for all patients living with diabetes. Personally, I've had high point diabetes for 15 years, and in those 15 years, I've not been able to actually screen for any complication, mainly because of the cost. It costs a lot of money, which most patients can't afford. For instance, the eye screening is something like 50 euros, which might seem very little to others, but in Uganda, it's a lot of money. So for a patient, this was a great opportunity for patients to actually come and do free screening, not just for the eyes, but for their teeth as well, and their feet and... Um, free education sessions, especially on nutrition. Uh, most of the things we struggle with, uh, with managing diabetes is a lack of adequate diabetes education and nutrition. Uh, most, most patients, especially with type 2, don't know the amount of food, what to eat, and that really causes a lot of problems in managing their day-to-day -day diabetes. They struggle with that. So being able to provide that today was really amazing. Another event we had was yesterday, and it was focused on diabetes education, mostly for health professionals. We recently had an issue where one of our brothers died uh, due to uh, misdiagnosis. He was admitted in hospital for almost a week and diagnosed with ulcers. Um, Sadly, it was DKA, and by the time they diagnosed him, uh, he died shortly after that. And this is an issue that's been going on for a while. Um, so it's, it was very important to have an event where we create more awareness about diabetes for health professionals. How do they, how do they tell that someone has type 1? Because this is information you would think is readily available in hospitals. But sadly, most health professionals actually aren't aware of the signs and symptoms to watch out for when a patient comes in hospital with diabetes. So those are some of the events we had and some of the main focuses that we had between yesterday and today. Well, first of all, Sarah, I'm very sorry for your loss. I didn't, I didn't know that. Sorry to hear that one of your, one of your colleagues died. Um, but also I want to say I love how you take the global topic of access to diabetes education, which uh, you're perfectly right. In our context, in the more Western context, that is meant proper education for people living with diabetes. But then, as we were saying, and this is why we're doing this Global Doc Day, where we bring perspectives from all over the world together, 
I love how you say you with your organization in Uganda, you've taken that to and adapted it so that it's better fitting for your context because you say, you notice that the main part of education that is lacking is maybe with the healthcare providers if they can't diagnose in time uh, a DKA, a type one uh, induced DKA, then maybe it is, uh, it is necessary to start there. Um, I think that's very, that's very fitting. And I like how these topics, although they're being set on a very global level by IDF, mean different things and are being then applied through member associations in very different ways in different settings in different countries. I would, I would also like to go to, to what you were saying about this, this first event, the, the free screening. It's, um, if I understand correctly, it is 50 euros that you have to pay out of pocket to get an examination like this and your organization, at least, I'm, I'm sure you can take over the whole healthcare system, right? But on this specific day, you go out and you have events and bring a bit of education, but also real relief and care to, to your community. That is amazing. Thank you, thank you. Can I ask you, like I asked all the others, looking forward, what do you think will be the main things that you will be working on in 2023 with your organization, you personally looking at the situation of people live with, living with diabetes in, in Uganda, in your country? Um, so I'm so lucky to work with a patient-led um, foundation as well called Africa Diabetes Alliance. It's, uh, its main focus is on diabetes education and we've We've passionately been advocating for that for a longest time. And when I had the theme of this year for our diabetes day, I was very excited because this is something, this is a big gap in Uganda for many of us. Personally, before I joined the um, support group, I really struggled with my own management. And when I joined, they used to have, and they still have these, what we call the book challenges, where all of us pick a book, a diabetes and we choose a chapter that we read and then summarize for all the other members. And this challenge has helped all of us to actually um, become more involved in our own self-management as well as have the right knowledge about how to manage diabetes. Um, for instance, my HbA1c was 14 two years ago. And when I joined the organization in only a few months, I'd taken it down to a 5.9. So diabetes education is still something that we need to advocate for in Uganda. There are so many patients that don't know how to manage. They, they actually lack the adequate information to manage their diabetes. So that's still a big gap that needs to be filled, especially in schools as well. Um, I got diabetes when I was in my secondary school. And some of the things I struggled with were the nurses at school, they weren't uh, educated about diabetes and I found a very hard time. I was a kid and there were the adults, but I couldn't rely on them because they actually lacked the proper information to best support me. And we, want to, we wanted to do the school awareness campaign, but then COVID happened and it slowed down mm. most of that, but we are hoping we can actually do it next year as well, to protect children living with diabetes in schools. Um, the other thing is we want to actually advocate for universal health coverage as well. That's something we passionately want to advocate for because there's a need for that. We've been fortunate to have programs in Uganda that do provide free diabetes medical supplies, especially for young children. But these programs like changing diabetes in in, in children, they have a certain period, uh, a certain age. So when you reach that age, you can't access the program anymore because the capacity they have isn't enough for everyone. So once you're, you're that age, it means you're paying out of your pocket and this is very, very expensive. You find something as small as a vial of like $2 is still something very, very expensive for um, a Ugandan, and then they start making insulin, and then they get all these complications because they don't have the money to actually buy these supplies. They can't check themselves. They, can't, they don't have the money for, let's say, the test kit because they're very expensive, and sometimes they're not even available in the pharmacy. 
So having a universal health coverage, not just for diabetes, but all NCDs is something we want to passionately advocate for next year. All right. Salah, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for educating us and educating this audience out there about World Diabetes Day and what it means for people living with diabetes in Uganda and what you and your organization are, are doing about this. Um, I love what you were talking about uh, education, how it helped you better manage your own diabetes and your own diabetes management. Your HbA1c, by the way, is better than mine. And it shows that <laughs> knowledge is so powerful, you know, yes. regarding next to all the treatment and the access and the technology. Uh, mm -hmm. Respect. I'm impressed. <laughs> thank you. Sarah, thank you. thank you very much for joining us, representing Uganda and the Ugandan Diabetes Association here on DDOG's Doc Day on World Diabetes Day. Greetings thank to you. Thank you very much for having me.